the appointments are lined up. You waiting for somebody in there? I've got an appointment. And it's not about what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. It's not personal. It's strictly business. It's time you and me had a private talk and we're step into my office. And step into my office with Michael Lombardi. Mr. Lombardi, we'll see you now. All right, Michael, we're hitting some of the hard truths, and we're going to start with the head coaches in this Super Bowl 58 matchup. Kyle Shanahan first, who is 0-2 as a head coach or coordinator in the biggest game in the Super Bowl. We know the second half loss all too well. Um, with it's a not certain... his fault. They can't blame him for that. <laughs> I'm just saying it happened, and then for me, that fourth quarter yeah. had a 10-point lead, and we all know how it ended against this Kansas City Chiefs team back four years ago. In addition to the Super Bowl woes, he's also lost twice in the NFL. NFC Championship as the 49ers head man. What does Shanahan need to hear this week to get this group over the hump? You know, I think what he needs to hear is, and he's and it's perfectly fine to hear it, is that when he takes over and he represents the 49ers, he needs to hear what Bill Walsh would often say to people. Look, it's just another game. We've got to relax. It's a different game. It has nothing to do with what happened back in 2019. That game has nothing to do with it. I know they scored 21 points in the fourth quarter. That was a reflection of we were not able to slow them down. We didn't have enough multiplicity with our defense. Why did that happen? Okay, now we fixed that. We have changed a little bit from that point. We didn't score in the fourth quarter in that game. We need to change. So it's not going to be a repeat of that. It's going to be just relax, play this game, make the adjustments. You've kind of done it before. You understand how to do it, and you just got to relax and rely on your preparation. I mean, he's got a great a great consigliere in terms of his father to rely on for advice. I think he's got to take the past out of it and stay in the present and forget about that last game. And for the players as well that you mentioned treating this like any other game, I think that thought process is going to be particularly critical for his quarterback in Brock Purdy with the big stage. Got to treat it like it's anything else. You, you definitely have to. And I think to me, as that's, hard as that is, <laughs> it's hard. But I think that's why Coach Walsh, when we talked about this at the beginning of the show, he was sleeping on the floor in the in the Stanford locker room to show people that he was relaxed. And, you know, you are a reflection of your team. That is a great story. Right? You are a reflection of your team. And if you're nervous, if you're yelling at the officials all the time, the players are going to yell at the officials. If you're uptight, they're going to feel that. It's kind of like, you know, how your dog feels your emotion. You know, it kind of your team feels your emotion. And so for me, Kyle's got to act really calm and show complete faith in his quarterback and really sell the opening drive. That's going to be the key. Got to sell this. We're going to play from the front, fellas. Let's go to Andy Reid, head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, who after that rough Christmas day lost to the Raiders. It's a team that sat nine and six. They were largely written off. Since then, they have adjusted their offensive philosophy. Five and zero oh since put themselves in position where they can repeat as Super Bowl champs, something that hasn't been done in a long, long time. But if you're Andy Reid, how do you ensure your group doesn't default back to the version of the Chiefs we saw earlier this year? Well, I think Andy knows the formula, and I think Coach Reed, as he sits in the office, he knows that there's a style of play that he has to have. And why go away from something that's been so effective, right? We've won four games in a row. We've been behind at halftime in two of them. We were behind but to the Bengals and we were behind to the Bills and we came from behind. Our quarterback has been able to play air free and we know how great he is. And we've been able to rejuvenate Travis Kelsey's catches. He's kind of improved in the postseason. So fellas, this is the formula. It's an easy job for Andy Reid to stand in front of his team this week and say, fellas, we're here because we've done these five things. Whereas Kyle Shanahan can't really say that. Kyle can say to his team, fellas, we're here and we haven't played our A game yet. Imagine how good we're going to be if we play our A game. And whereas Andy's going to say, fellas, we're just going to keep doing what we're doing because it works. Mm -hmm. And again, that experience so critical. So many players returned from that team a year ago. Familiar on this stage. This is Step Into My Office on the Lombardi line. Michael Lombardi giving out some hard truths to a number of coaches who need it as they take a seat in the chair in Michael's office. Let's go to Dan Quinn, the new head coach for the Washington Commanders. After three seasons as the Cowboys DC, they named him as their guy. Of course, previously was a head man with that Atlanta Falcons team that led him to the Super Bowl, but has not had a whole lot of success offensively as a head coach without Kyle Shanahan. And of course, that final season with Atlanta, 0-5 start, and he gets removed from his head coaching duties. What does Quinn need to focus on to make the most of what is a second chance for him in Washington? Well, you know, the year, Dan, when you took off from football and you analyzed everything that you did and you broke it down and you started your second career with the Cowboys and changed and modified what you did, I think it's the same approach you have to take. 
good hire in Cliff Kingsbury. You've got to get the defense to play at a higher level, mistake-free. I mean, all the things that matter in football, you've got to be able to bring that energy. But you also have to bring accountability. You also are going to have to bring a demanding element because you cannot fail to recognize that the culture you were about to take over was toxic. You just can't walk in there and say they're receptive. They've got a lot of talented players on the team, especially offensively, that have complained about how they get coached. They complained about what they're doing. So you're going to have to figure out how to connect with that team. And you don't have the track record to do it in terms of, I got this Super Bowl. You're going to have to win them over with your knowledge. And I think that's going to be the key. The key is going to get everybody to buy in. But you're going to have to work a hell of a lot harder. And you're going to have to have more accountability. Because that program, from my eyes to the field, has never had accountability in it. And that's why they can't win. Washington looking for a whole lot of change in a positive way. And it'll also be interesting to see what happens with the defensive coordinator position. Well, that's going to be the, well, the Dallas defense coordinator. We talked about that, right? Yep. That, that I think that's going to be Ron Rivera. Wouldn't that be an interesting uh, twist? Oh, my. I do not think that oh would my. be good for Mike McCarthy. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> um, let's go to another Mike. Mike McDonald, the new head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. At 36 years old, the youngest head coach in the National Football League where things sit right now. He was previously the defensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens, also at the University of Michigan. How can he have the same success he's had as a coordinator where we just saw him lead the Ravens to be the top defensive unit in the league? to this head coaching role in the NFL? I think what he's got to do is get the defense to play at a much higher level. They have really good talent on defense. They just haven't done that. They haven't been able to coordinate themselves and, and utilize, utilize, Stormy, the home field advantage that is in Seattle, right? We would always talk about, oh, it's the Legion of Boom, all these things, but they never win games up there. Like they, Pittsburgh goes up there, runs for 170 yards against them. I think that's the first step. We've got to get more physical on defense. We've got to be more diversified on defense, and we've got to take advantage of our home field on defense and then he's going to have to figure out the offense he is going to have to figure out how to make sure we are doing that and cut cut and be cutting edge offensively to help their offense and I think that's going to be it he's got to sell curiosity and he's got a really good general manager and John Snyder who will help him who reads a lot of books who wants to get better all the time and I think if these two guys work together I think the sky's the limit I think it's going to be a good hire for them and it has been a long time since Seattle's had that defensive hard-nosed identity that they're trying to get back to the Legion of Boom days how about Bill Belichick and Mike Rabel two free agent head coaches with all of the eight previous vacancies now filled. Both are former Coach of the Year Award winners. Both left their positions this offseason with their teams underachieving in 2023. But how should these two coaches, and particularly Bill Belichick, who's obviously such a legend in what he has done, how should they approach this first offseason without being a head man? But act like a head man. Don't stop. I mean, get yourself an office. Get yourself into a routine. Go to work every single day and work on things that you want to improve on. You know, this is the greatest opportunity. Most people can sit there and say cry because you don't have an opportunity. But I say reward yourself with the opportunity. And I think ultimately spend this time, study the draft, break your day, work, take a vacation, but come back committed to working on improving everything that you want to improve in your program because the league's not going to be this dumb for this long, right? Somebody's going to call, right? Somebody is going to call. That Like stupidity will not continue for another year. And so that's going to give you an opportunity Opportunity, but you can't come in the same person that you were before. You're going to have to redirect your energy, and I think this is a great opportunity. You can become dangerous now. You can become dangerous because nobody would have ever thought you two would have been unemployed, but now you have time to improve your craft. And not very often do you get that great opportunity. I mean, look, let's face it, it happens in politics. Sometimes, you know, Bill Clinton was the governor of Arkansas. He lost it, and he came back eight years later or four years later, came as an improved, understood the mistakes he made. I think it's really critical. Well, you know, we talked about it a little bit earlier, too, when we were discussing Mike McCarthy's contract being up after this year. Like, that could be an opening. The Eagles, who maintain oh, yeah. Nick Sirianni, that could be an opening. I think that he, he could... Bill Belichick or Vrabel could end up in a far better situation they, next year. And better than any of these jobs this year because obviously these jobs, they think they have all the answers, right? And so, look, I think the only thing they could do is you have to stay within the program that you will. you got to go to work every day. I mean, that's what you've been trained to do. Go to vsun.com slash subscribe to become a VEASAN Pro subscriber today.